All right, welcome back everyone to our second lecture on um, church and ministry administration. Uh, we've been talking about communication and uh, let's take the next question in the chat. There is a um, question here from Jatin. When we realize that a person has a calling or purpose at ABC, but the individual wants to go abroad or pursue something of their own, are we open to them and communicate our thoughts? Hmm. Um, the answer is yes. Um, we definitely are open and we have conversations. And I, I would think, you know, and I look back uh, the last 20 plus years, right from the beginning, there have been lots of people uh, who have been part of APC. Either some, some of them have been part of our pastoral team, uh, some who have been in the congregation, uh, who all have had a desire to go and start the ministry. God has called them to do something. And uh, in many, many cases, you know, they would come, they would talk to me, tell me what they you know, feel called to do, and we'd have an you know, open conversation. And uh, we always bless them, send them uh, to do what they want to do. Uh, in some cases, we give financially to help them get started, start their church or the ministry. Uh, some big ministries, some big works in our city today, you know, they came out of APC, we helped them get started actually, uh, supported them. Uh, so some churches in the city uh, were started by people who were part of APC, they've gone out and they've started churches in Bangalore. Um, and. Uh, and we always just bless them, send them out. It's, it's perfectly fine. Um, some people have gone overseas, gone abroad. So um, they're also, you know, uh, the various parts of the world, and they are they started ministry or doing ministry there. We definitely uh, have these open conversations. Let them do what they feel. Now, what I do not do is. I do not try to convince them to stay at APC. Um, the reason is, uh, I just they, if they want if they want to stay at APC, it should be from their own heart, and not because I tell them to or any one of us tell them to. So we never tell them you have to stay at APC and serve here. No, it should be, it should come from their heart. Uh, it should be something they want to do, uh, or whatever they feel they call to do. Uh, we just bless them, send them out and let them do it. And to whatever extent we can, we continue to support them, encourage them. Some of them usually call back, write back for guidance, counsel, so on. And in fact, just last week, I was meeting with one of our pastors who, who, who last year, was it? Uh, yeah, last year he moved overseas. And uh, he and his family, and. Um, uh, he's, he wants to pioneer a church there, and so he was visiting India, we were sitting, we were having discussions and all that. So we're very open to having these conversations and trying to share and help them pursue the call, but we do not force them to stay with APC because that should come from their heart. And uh, yeah, that's the approach we've taken. Yeah, I hope that helps. Yeah. Do you have a follow-up question on that? Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so, Pastor, what I, uh, I the other question that I have in mind is like I'm curious as a church what we are doing, but sometimes they are too young to realize exactly where God wants them to be. So at mm. that time, uh, do we tell them more like you know, I mean not like a compulsion, but do we tell them this is what we sense and then you can go ahead and take a decision okay um i would i would yeah so if i would usually uh, put it as a suggestion you know would example say would you like to consider uh serving here you know, rather than uh, see so the moment i say you know i feel the lord is telling me to tell you or something like that if i put it in that way then they, it, it puts, puts too much pressure on them that they have to do what 
you know, I feel the Lord is telling me to tell them, you know. So I, I, I would just say, would you like to consider, you know, doing this? Uh, uh, and just, you know, essentially trust that, you know, God would guide them and uh, direct them. But I, yeah, but I try to avoid telling, even if I know, I try to avoid telling people, Hey, you should be actually you should actually be here and serve God uh, because it's better that it comes from the heart. Otherwise, what happens is they turn around and blame us, you know, for anything that happens. Uh, and uh, I don't want to be in that situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Pastor. Sure. Sure. All right. Any other questions or communication? All right. Let's move, uh, let's get started with our next lesson, which I think is very important. It's about culture. Okay. So, we we'll talk a little bit about culture, and uh, I feel this is very, very important. Um, so, when you say culture, uh, it's really talking about the environments that we create uh, within the organization uh, and if it's a church, then it's within the congregation and the church community. So let's talk, you know, uh, primarily we talk about the organization first, the uh, administration organization part. And then, of course, all of this also extends to the congregation and the church community. So when we talk about culture, we're talking about, you know, the values, the practices, uh, the way we do things, the way we behave. The way we conduct ourselves, the it, a lot of it is uh, unspoken. Like you know, you can't. The culture is not something that is, uh, in the sense, like uh, you know, you can touch and you, you can physically feel it, but you can recognize it when you come into an environment. Hey, the culture here among these people is like this, and uh, or it may be different from what I'm used to. You can recognize it. You can sense it you can feel it but sometimes it's also very uh, you know very difficult to define but it's real right and the culture within the organization is so important because that is in the at the end of the day when people come to work they are stepping into an environment and the culture defines that environment and if that environment is nice, if it is very healthy, if it is very supportive, if it's something people enjoy, they'll keep coming back. But if the culture is very harsh, it is very um, oppressive, if it's something very difficult, they won't run away. I don't want to be in that culture. Right? So it's like, as soon as possible, they leave. They want, they want to come back, right? So even though the culture is something, uh, you know, it's it's very, uh, it's, 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 not, it's not something you can really touch and feel, but it's very real. And uh, the culture is something we cultivate over time. It doesn't happen by accident, you know? It's by, it's actually in any organization or in any congregation or in any community, the culture is cultivated over time by these values, by these practices, by the things we say and do. We're actually creating a culture. You know? So our goal should be to have a kingdom culture. Try to create a culture that will look like heaven. As far as I'm not saying we can do it, <laughs> try. <laughs> uh, I don't think we'll ever, uh, we won't reach it, but try to create a culture that is like God's kingdom, like heaven. But people will feel, like, now of course we are all, uh, you know, we will make mistakes and so it will be disturbed here and there, all those things that, uh, uh, you know, that perfect state we may never reach, but that should be our goal, you know? So when we talk about culture, we're talking about these jointly held beliefs, uh, we're talking about these values, practices within the organization, you know, what we keep doing, the way of behaving and thinking, the norms, patterns. For example, 
um, in church office. Uh, almost always, my office door is open, kept open. Unless I'm meeting somebody, I close it. But Or if I'm doing something on a call or something, I close it. But generally, the door is always open, which means anyone at any time can walk in. So you just, any, any, I mean, talking about the staff, you know, any staff can just walk in. Doors open means we can just walk in and hey, talk, you know, or question this, that. So that's part of our culture. So it's not like, oh, pastor is there, don't go talk to him. No, no, like that. This is, anyone can come, you know. Now, of course, uh, if I am busy, I would say, hey, can I talk to you after 10 minutes or whatever, just depending on what we're doing. But this thing is, it's part of our culture. You're just free to come and talk. You know? So our behaviors are shaped by this, you know, uh, how we behave um, and uh, the, way, the way things are done. So we want, for example, we want to create a culture where um, things are done well. So it's part of our culture to try to do things with excellence, do things, you know, try to be perfect. Of course, we will make mistakes, but try to be, right? Do things well. You know, I remember like uh, two weekends ago, uh, not last time, but Sunday before, we were, uh, we were in CMC Bello uh, as part of the missions conference. And we had taken a team, I think about 10, 11 of, 10 of our youth, I don't know, so a small group. And uh, our youth, for three days uh, in the morning sessions, they were doing short, short skit before I would speak. But, um, so, and the skits were very impactful. There's like, what, 10 minute skits. Um, it was very impactful. The students, you know, this is a missions conference, all medical students or from medical field, they're all sitting and listening, watching. So very impactful. But, be more than that, more the skits are very important, very impactful. But more than that, when I went there, so many doctors were coming and saying, "Thank you for your young people. They were so helpful. They were, they wanted to help us in anything, anything, everything. They they are so amazed to see this group of young people." who are so passionate about Jesus, not only doing the skit, but after the skit, right? That is only 10 minutes. But rest of the day, they are serving. They are helping. They say, whatever you tell us, we'll do. So that's about 1,000, 1,500 people are in that, in that conference. And how about young people are serving? You know? Now, for the first two days, I was not there in person. I couldn't go. I only went on Sunday. Saturday evening I reached, so I was there only on Sunday. So I was not there physically telling, hey, go do this. I was not even there. I just told the young people, you go ahead. Because I couldn't, my dad wasn't well. So, so you, you go ahead, I'll come. Uh, I, I, first two days I did it on Zoom. Um, but what was it? It was part of our culture. Right? That when these young people go, they know, okay, we do our skit, but we have to serve. Just serve. Do whatever is told, you do. Yeah? This is organized by CMC. They are doing it. It's their conference. Yeah? But we are here to serve. Morning till evening, just serve. Do whatever. Be helpful. Whatever you can, you help. And these doctors are coming. So these your young people, so helpful. So they were so amazed. So I was saying, we are going to call, we're going to give you one full day <laughs> to come and, uh, you know, minister to our, 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 our the doctor or the, the community there. But where does that come from? It's part of our culture. Right? I was not physically there to tell the students to do this. In fact, I didn't tell you, I just said, you go, serve, that's it. They went, they serve, you know. So I think, so when we, Create when we create such a culture, we carry it wherever we go. You know, we can be here, we can be there, but our cult this is our culture, this is how we behave. 
This is how we talk. This is how we do things. You know? It is our culture. So if you want to think about it in the natural, also it's like this. When Indians, we Indians, when we go to America, we go somewhere else, we have our own culture. We cook our food a certain way. Uh, in our community, we'll behave a certain way. We, we, we can be in America, we could be anywhere in the world. But we're carrying our culture. We behave like this. This is how we talk, or our food, our taste, and all those things. So we are carrying our culture wherever we go. So like that, we're talking about this culture within the organization, the ministry. We're carrying it. Right? Now suppose we did not have this culture. Imagine we sent 10 young people there. They may do this skit. But after that, they'll behave any way they want. And oh, you, <laughs> when I go there, they'll say, what people you sent here? <laughs> you know, it'll be totally, it may bring a bad name, you know, and uh, it may cause a lot of problems. But we didn't have to worry. You know? uh, so, um, they're just giving an example, you know, the, the benefit of creating a good culture. It, you carry it. Wherever you go, if you're part of that culture, you'll carry it, right? Now, uh, so we're talking about culture. Now, we also recognize that in a very big organization, there could be subcultures. That means uh, there's a there's a community, and within the community, there could be smaller groups that have maybe their own way, subcultures. So to be careful of that. Uh, be mindful of it. If it's good, it's okay. If it's not good, you have to address it. We'll talk about it, right? Um, culture is dynamic, meaning it could change. So it be careful. Uh, if we don't maintain our culture, then it can change, you know, and uh, maybe due to internal, external things. And uh, both in the workplace and in the church, culture is very important, right? So we'll we'll talk about it. So within the organization, why is culture important? It affects the employee experience, like we said. It can affect productivity can affect how people are served, and it also protects our organization from negative influences. If somebody comes in with a culture that is not good, not healthy, uh, then our system itself will reject it. Example, um, there was a time when we hired, we hired a person who joined us, joined our staff. And um, he actually was starting off like, you know, at a, at a, at a, like, like, uh, at a very basic level in, in that particular area of ministry. But within, uh, within, every March, within like three months or something, he was starting to use title like team leader, and then uh, he wanted to become, uh, what was it? Head, head of that area of ministry. Within, within like three months. It's like, hey, he just joined us. He hasn't even finished one year. And uh, now he's talking, he's telling me about he has put himself titled team leader. And he's talking, being, talking to me about becoming head. I was like. And in at ABC, we are uh, one of the one of the things about our cultures, we are not interested in our titles. Titles is more of responsibility. That yeah, you're responsible for that. We, that's why we give you title. But tell me, we're not interested in titles. Don't care. Watch your title. But this person, like, I was like, oh, what do I do? And I did not detect this when we did the interview, that he would have such an attitude where he's interested in the title. But now he's already employed. He's in the organization. Within three months, he's all talking about, already has given himself a team leader title. You know, we want side of this. Oh. And I didn't see this, like during interview and all that, I didn't see. So this was uh, just a no-no. Like, 
it is not uh, this is not part of our culture we don't care about titles we don't want people to be thinking about the titles that's not issue you get it as long as you do your work at be like a servant you know you serve do your work do it well work with everybody don't worry about this you know so i had to give him feedback I said hey um, this is not you know don't worry about the title and all that yeah you want to grow as a person that is a good thing but not don't worry about titles this thing and uh, so i don't know how he received that like whether he understood it didn't understand but i had to in a nice way say that at apc these titles don't matter it will, yeah you you're given a title as a responsibility it will come at the right time you know and i had to kind of bring him down to the level at where he's actually meaning help him understand hey this is your work you are wanting these titles where it is a much higher responsibility and that is more work in that is, you know if you are head of something you are overseeing a whole area of ministry it's a different thing you you've joined us at this level as a, basically like almost like an entry level is joined so uh, so that was uh, so the thing is when within an organization you have a culture and somebody comes or something happens that is not aligned to the culture you have to address it and in many cases the culture itself will reject it yeah, so in this case eventually uh, he had to leave the organization uh, because if the culture is strong it will reject people who don't fit the culture either you adapt to the culture and recognize hey in this culture titles don't matter i am i'm here only to serve forget about titles just serve with your heart either you adapt to it or if you can't adapt to it it will reject you you can't fit you know so having a good healthy kingdom culture heaven type a culture like heaven where the way, biblical culture you know the, what jesus has taught us that is very important and um, you know uh, it will uh, if you have a if that culture is strong it will protect itself and protect the people right so it's, in some ways like the immune system you know in the body it'll protect so how are we going to create this culture how are we going to cultivate it i'll mention one point we'll stop after this it starts with the leadership so culture is something that comes top down yeah. it's very difficult to create culture bottom up very difficult but culture comes top down means what the leadership is like that will come to everybody so if you're the leader of the organization then whether you like it or not you by your life you are actually shaping the culture of the organization because people are watching you uh, they'll see how you behave uh, they'll see how you do and they'll do the same thing yeah. even if you have a organization of huge large numbers of people the people who are immediately under your influence they'll follow you and then the people who are under their influence will be influenced by them so it will go down so even though you may not directly be interacting with people you know far away from you eventually it will go down so culture is something that comes top down very i would say like it all doesn't go bottom up very difficult to push it up right so leadership must model the behavior you the leaders you you have to model the culture the behavior that you want in the culture people follow the leaders right 
Uh, so we reproduce after our own kind. Yeah, so that's just a that's a law. You'll always reproduce after your own kind. Apple will not give birth to orange. <laughs> apple will give birth to apple. Finish. That is it. It's a law. If apple gives birth to orange, something has gone wrong. <laughs> something is not right. So, what are some things? So you avoid, for example, some of the things we try to do here. We avoid celebrity culture. That means, don't make anybody a celebrity. Not even the pastor, nothing. Now, once I went, I was in, in our city only, in Bangalore. I was invited to speak at some other uh, ministry. Um, they're having some, I think it was a maybe anniversary or something, some event, another ministry. And they ordered, entered a big auditorium there. I was called to speak there. Oh, okay, I went because he's a good friend of mine. Fine. So I went. As I was entering the, the whole venue, huge life size pictures of this person. They're huge. I mean, bigger than life. <laughs> Big, big, of the person. Okay, if you have one poster like that, it's okay. But everything. Then I walked inside the hall. Full life size thing, pictures of this person. Preacher. And on the stage, everywhere. I'm, I'm looking at him, where is Jesus here? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, in my mind, I'm thinking, where is Jesus? Because everywhere I'm seeing, big, big, these, you know, you know, they make these big uh, cutouts of that. Everywhere, full auditorium. They're on the stage. I was so embarrassed, like I'm supposed to preach in this kind of a auditorium. I was so embarrassed. But anyway, I, because he's a friend, okay, I went, I preached and ministered and all that. And then in the end, after, after the meeting is over, we're just talking. Then he told me, I think he was feeling it also. He told me, hey, I didn't do all this. My people did all this. But in my mind, I thought, see, at least you can tell your people not to do it. Simple. It is not an excuse to say, I didn't do it. My people did it. No, you can tell your people not to do something like this, where they just keep it about Jesus. Right? So, uh, so intentionally from the and I, you know he's still ministering. There, the work is going on in Bangalore, and his friends, still friends, all that. So I'm not. I'm just saying that we have to intentionally not make ourselves a celebrity. Don't make it because people will want to do it for whatever reason. Or you know, they maybe it's you know they want to appreciate you or whatever for whatever reason they want to make you a celebrity, superhero. But you have to intensely say, don't do it. So right from beginning, example, I, I may have shared this with you, you know, right from beginning, when we I said, please don't put pictures of our pastors on any of the graphics. So Sunday live stream, they don't put, I refused. Only till I think in 20, maybe in 2019, they convinced me that in our daily devotional, we'll put the picture of the speaker because we're having so many, every week it's somebody different. So if you put the picture of the person, people will know who's doing the devotional that week. For that, I said, okay. But you will see in all our Sunday services, like you won't find pictures of the preacher. I said, don't do it. Just put the title, put the date, all that. But don't, don't make it about the preacher. People should come and listen to us, not because of who is preaching, but because they know they're going to hear God's word. They should come for that. So uh, only, you know, so only change exception we gave was, okay, for the daily devotional, because every week somebody's different, I said, okay, 
But if you go back to our older devotionals, it was not there. You know, it was only the title, some graphic. I said, don't put pictures anywhere, even on our books. Right? We've been printing it from 2000. No pictures of me on any of the books. It's, it's, that's, that's not important. Name you put, okay, I take responsibility for the content. If you want to hit anybody, hit me. But other than that, there's no need. Yeah? People should read the book for what's inside it. Yeah? Not because of the picture of the person. You know? So from the beginning, we told immediately, don't you know, make the person the reason for the ministry. Make it about God's words. Make it about the main spirit work of the work of God. Yeah. So even now in all our graphics and all that, very careful. Um, only in conferences, if there are four speakers, we'll put four pictures because okay, people know who's speaking. But otherwise, we don't want to make celebrities out of people. Yeah. So intensely, and we have to be very careful. You know how. So, but the problem is in the church. The church is the worst place where and it happens all over the world, where the church has created celebrities out of the leaders. And sometimes they give good reasons. You know, like you'll see one pastor walking, he'll have four bodyguards, you know, four, six bodyguards every all around him walking. So like, why? Oh no, no. Otherwise, yeah, people come to the last four prayer and all that. So we have to have bodyguards escorting him to the thing stage, then from the stage to the car. He'll only come in Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Cannot <laughs> anything below that is doesn't fit the man of God. All these kinds of things we have created. And we will see all kinds of things happening all over the world. All over the world. Where and it has become part of the culture. You, know, you have to treat the pastor as or the leader, whoever it is, like a celebrity. But actually, he's only a man. I mean, yes, we honor the gift, we honor that God has called the person. We of course honor it. But we don't have to make the person a celebrity. But sadly, in the church, that has happened. It happens all over the world. Everywhere you go, you see same Tamasha, you see. <laughs> they become celebrities. But what we can do is this. We say, don't do it. So avoid celebrity. So then what happens? Everybody else behaves normally. From the pastor, assistant pastor, associate pastor, everybody. Otherwise, if pastor behaves like celebrity, then next line, they will also behave like celebrity. They want to be treated like special. Like that, it'll go. It'll, everybody will be wanting that same treatment uh, privilege. And and you also have to be intentional about. It. For example, now when we're going to CMC, uh, they said uh, before you know before we went, they said, Pastor, we will put you up in this place, and we'll put your team over there, another place. I said, no, I want to stay with the team. So no, that, that place is not that good. It's uh, very basic. Huh? We'll put you in this nice place. I said, no, I want to stay with the team. They said the third time, like we were going back and forth. You know, they're talking. I said, see, uh, let me tell you. The reason I don't want to stay in that place is because I want my team to understand that we are a team. I'm going to stay exactly where they stay. I don't want to think that pastor is getting special treatment. Oh, okay, we understand pastor. So that was the intentional thing, right? Yes, I could have gone and stayed in that other place that they had specially arranged for you know, all the speakers, and maybe maybe it was, I don't know what it was, I didn't see it. Uh, maybe it was more special, whatever. But I said, wherever you put the team, give me one room there, I will stay in the same place. I'll stay with the team. Because I want our team to know that, hey, we're all on the same level. It's not like our pastor is treated differently. We are sent here. So it was a very basic place. They all survived. <laughs> but that was it. And I remember once when we went on a mission trip, 
uh, same thing happened. So we had gone to one place. And uh, the host, he said, uh, Pastor, I can put you in a hotel in the city. So we were outside the city, but your team can stay here. I said, no, no, I want to stay with the team only. Where the team stays, I will stay. I don't want a separate place. I said, no, we can put you in a hotel there. We'll pick you up, bring you back. And I said, no, 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 I'll stay with the team. OK. And the whole team, we were sleeping in a chicken coop. And it's, uh, you know, that uh, where they keep chicken. Right? They had cleaned it out. And uh, they cleaned it. So it was only concrete floor, something like concrete floor. And then the mesh, you know, that uh, chicken coop mesh, like one hut, like a mesh like that. And they put beds everywhere. Hey, if, my, if you're going to put the team there, I will also stay here. So we all slept there. Three days. So be careful, snakes might come. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. They stay there. But from the beginning, so that was the culture. So if we do this, then the whole team will follow. So today, nobody, none of our pastors will say, oh, no, I want special treatment. Whatever you give the team, same thing, a whole team will have. No special thing. You know? So from the beginning, you know, you create that culture. You set the example. This is how we will work. We are all as a team. We all stay together. And uh, we will work together. You know? So then that creates that culture. And everybody will follow that. Okay. So first point, it, it starts with the leadership. You create, avoid a celebrity culture. You model servant leadership. And you give opportunity to people, give feedback, and be open to feedback, all that, just conversations, all that, you know, those are things. Then. So let's pause here, we'll t a few moments for questions. We'll continue. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions? Yeah. So regarding the culture, so like recently, like when I saw a leader, is a big ministry. Uh, that, they, is a, that uh, is a big ministry. Big ministry yeah. And the leader of that ministry is okay, very good person. Uh, but like the pastors which came with that pastor, like uh, what they said, okay, they want AC rooms, mm. separate rooms, and all. So, but the pastor is very good, mm. means very cooperative and the humble hearted. And uh, so, like, what will be the reason the pastors are behaving like that? Yeah. Mm. So saying the main pastor and the, these are the assi like assistants. Yeah. Huh? They want all this. Huh? Mm. Maybe the maybe these things were not communicated properly. Like so, then what happens is those in the next level they feel they can misuse their position. Yeah, because oh yeah, they're next level. They're also in a big position. So then they take advantage. And also, see, if we see something wrong, we have to correct it. So if I see something wrong in any of our pastors doing something, I will talk to them. They you this is not, you know, that's right. So that if they don't receive that correction then what will happen they will go and do whatever they even though they have a good example to follow but now because they are in a place of privilege they are in a privileged position they may tend to misuse it which i think is what is happening and the way we avoid it is that when we see something wrong or something we don't want to be part of our culture then we need to address it we need to talk to them Hey, see, uh, don't make demands. If people give you, it's fine. But don't demand for comfort. Don't demand for luxury. If people want and give you as a, something to do for you, okay, you take it. But otherwise, don't demand for it. You know. Uh, so if we, we have to communicate, we have to protect our culture. And we'll talk about you know, that, how to maintain. Otherwise, it can go wrong.
So Chaya, uh, core values are key to leading the organization. Yeah, that's right. So these core values are important. I mean, to constantly, you know, affirm that and make it part of our. Any other questions? All good? OK, let's close for today. Um, thank you so much. We'll continue this uh, talking about culture next week. And uh, yeah, thank you. God bless. See you again.